been kind of this conversation where uh, some people feel like the, the players are mean to Caitlyn because they're jealous, you know, but then again, there's some people saying, oh, no, it's just because she's a white woman or whatever. And, um, and, uh, and, and so in this interview between Charlemagne and uh, Bill Maher, uh, Bill Maher said something to Charlemagne that kind of froze him up. He said something like, uh, he said, well, are you saying that this, that people love Caitlyn because it's just racism? And, and, and Charlemagne said, no, it's not, it's not racism, but, uh, she, he's basically mentioning the fact that she's white and black players, there are black players like Aja who are better than Caitlyn who don't get the same level of acknowledgement. But then Bill said something like, well, what about Serena Williams? Like, we, you know, we, we love people. Everybody loves Serena Williams and she's black. And, and then for some reason it kind of froze <laughs> Charlemagne, like he didn't know what to say. Um, but 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 actually, I think that there was a, a, a good response to that. And I'll lay it out like this. And this is an economic discussion, something that I see just because I look at everything from a financial standpoint. Here's the, the reality. OK, so basically, in my mind, Caitlin Clark is to women's basketball what Elvis Presley was to musical performance. Uh, she's she's the basketball version of Elvis, the basketball version of Eminem. She's the modern day Larry Bird. That that's what she is. She's all those three things. Elvis, if you put if, if Elvis, Larry Bird, and Eminem had a baby, it would be Caitlin Clark. Okay, and uh, even though that's a disgusting thought, I know, but it's kind of, but that's true. So um, so 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 this what this speaks to is it, it could be. I mean, you could connect it to racism, and and it's indirectly connected. Connected, and I'll explain that too. But it's really driven. By by marketability in a dr total addressable market, like let me ask you all a question. Let me ask you all. Let's give me an honest answer to this question: Yes or no? When you all watch a movie or watch a sporting event, how many of you are likely to cheer for the black person over anybody else? How many of you, uh, you know, or, or you you watch a movie, you you want the black person to survive, or or you watch a sporting event and you just cheer for the black person, even if you don't know who they are, you just kind of like to, you know, or even when when if y'all remember when Tiger Woods first went out and he was kicking everybody's ass in golf, he's he's the greatest golfer in the history of all mankind. And it's crazy because he was the only black guy out there. How many of y'all got excited about that? I, I was very proud of Tiger. I, I know Tiger's politics are a little bit conflicted, but but I just love Tiger. I loved his dad. I love, you know, it's an example of what strong fatherhood can do. Um, so 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 we had this thing. We like to see ourselves, you know, we love to see the black person do well, especially if they're in a space. Where where white people have traditionally dominated, like tennis, when Venus and Serena came in and were killing it, it was it was so much fun. It was so inspiring to watch. So I want to ask a question: If, if we're able to um, appreciate the opportunity to see ourselves on screen and to see ourselves doing well, uh, is it out of the question to to expect that perhaps white people might feel the same way? Right? The same way I get excited when I when I see Tiger or Venus or Serena, I imagine white people get excited when they see Caitlin Clark. Hey, right? I mean, think about it. There aren't a lot of Caitlin Clarks. I mean, you know, and, and remember, this is a sport basketball where it's usually the black people that are dominating. So you finally get your one white guy or your one white woman, and you're like, yay, there's one of us, <laughs> right? right? Just like I felt when I when when golf golf was boring to me when it was all white. But now, but when Tiger came along, it was like, oh yeah, now golf is cool. I'm gonna watch every golf tournament now. And and it showed, it showed in the numbers. Tiger, his presence and his dominance led to an economic explosion in golf that they had never even dreamed about. Even Tiger, the old, fat, bald version of Tiger, who's who's not even a shadow of what he used to be. Is still a major financial draw. That's why he's in all these tournaments. It's because they'll pay big money to get him out there because we like people like us want to see him, right? And, and, and so, 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 so the reality is that when you're looking at total addressable market, that is the sole advantage that Caitlin Clark has because it's 100% clear she's not as good as the best players in the WNBA. And, you know, and, and, and the reality is this let's flip it like this. If Aja Wilson had been a white woman, then Aja Wilson would have been the, the original Caitlin Clark, in my opinion. You know, that, that because because she was dominant, she was the number one draft pick. She did all the things Caitlin did. But but she but the same attention is not going to be there because the total addressable market is not the same. There are far more white people in America than there are black people. So uh, a white person that goes into a traditionally black dominated space like hip hop or or basketball 
or boxing is going to just draw the revenue simply because there are more fans that are going to pull money out of their pocket in order to see that person. It's that basic. It's really that simple. And, 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 and it's interesting that because people want to make it into an emotional political issue, you're distracted from the basic economics. The basic economics says that um, 1 million times $20 is going to be less than 10 million times $20. That if 1 million people give you $20, that's not the same as 10 million people giving you $20. And, and, and because Ice Cube knows how to count, that's why Ice Cube offered Caitlin Clark a $5 million contract to come and and play in the big three, which she, she did not, she declined that. Or that's also why, remember uh, when Tiger Woods first went to uh, professional golf, he was offered $100 million from Nike and all the golfers were like, man, this is bull crap. This guy hasn't even won a tournament yet. But Nike understood marketing. Nike understood business. Nike said, yeah, but, but not only is he dominant, but he's also black. And if he were a white guy, we wouldn't pay him $100 million because he's not bringing new eyeballs to the television screen, which is going to translate into the sale of far more merchandise and far more viewership, which is literally a multi-billion dollar conversation. That's what it was. It was they didn't pay them the extra money because they just like black people more. We know that's not the case. They did it because they saw the total addressable market. It was basic economics, and and I and I just really find it so fascinating that people don't talk about this. Like, well, well, they only like her because she's white, and everybody liked the white woman. Yeah, I mean, sure, you can talk about that. And if you want to talk about the racial aspect of it all, sure, there's there's some racial implications that are more more indirect. Perhaps uh, you can go into uh, just the fact that white people owe you $14 trillion because they've been stealing your wealth for the last 400 years. The reparations conversation, shout out to Tariq Nasheed and the reparations rally in D.C. They're having it. I think they're having it today, actually. Um, you know, th this conversation needs to be had, but to, you know, sort of take something like that and not understand those, you know, how those economics works uh, is a little bit confusing to me. I, 